nobody's making those leaps. You, with living soil especially, man, you have to know your shit. You yeah. just have to, you have to know what you're doing. Um, you know, because you have investments coming in with a lot of people with a lot of money that are changing from synthetic cultivation to living soil beds, and they have to be successful. Blanco. Destiny, why don't you go ahead and you know so much more about cultivations and grows and the plant than I do. My oh, yeah, right. So you go ahead and introduce yeah. our guest and uh, then I can bring it back to me and my limited knowledge. I, I tried to open up a cultivation once, but we'll get into that in a second. Well, go ahead, Destiny. Yeah, so we got Soil King here in the, I just learned, native to Arizona. Yeah. We have... Um, Done some quite some um, networking with you. You came out to Mita. We yeah. met you at um, Imperius the first last year. Yes. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Soil King. How a you guys got started? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just a, a kid that had a infatuation with growing anything. And my hands were in the soil when most people play basketball or sports, and I was cultivating every. Uh, that's my first memory is a tomato or a strawberry patch. The most consistent thing in my life is it's just growing. Man. There's no segregation in agriculture. I'll just say it three times. No segregation in agriculture. And for those of you in the back that didn't hear it, there's yeah. no segregation yeah. in agriculture. Let it know. Uh, let it know. I know this is a cannabis podcast, but my mom and I used to grow strawberries when I was a kid. When I was a kid, it's like more beautiful, more fresh, fresh strawberries, strawberry off the vine, off the vine. You see it, you feel it, you touch it, and you're like, wow. You know what's even better than that? Companion planting your cannabis plants with strawberries. Oh, wow. Ooh. Like, come on, man. Ground cover, we got it all. You should be harvesting everything. It's herbs. So when did your journey in cannabis begin? Let's go back to your first cannabis experience. When I was a kid, you know, I, had a hard, I had a hard upbringing. A lot of people did. It built me, so I don't complain about it. It's not a complaint. It's a... Who I am. Yeah, it makes you who you are yeah, today. Man. And so I, I was, uh, you know, parents didn't really have parents. Um, hung out with the older crowd. And, and uh, I remember really my first experience with cannabis. Everybody smoked weed. I was too young to smoke weed. And, but they were, they had like Led Zeppelin album covers. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah. They had Led Zeppelin <laughs> Don't mind album the cat. covers, uh, zigzags, and, and, uh, uh, you know, brick weed, and so as they would they would sift their seeds and they roll off the album covers. I pick them up. It was like <laughs> late seventies. That had to be yeah, late late seventies. Late seventies. Exactly. Yeah. How old were you? Like were you in high school? Yeah. So the first time, and that was like nine years old when I started tapping into that. When I at eleven, I I got arrested for the first time for growing weed in a pine tree because I was platforming them up in pine trees and. Uh, Whoa, I, you, you were growing weed and pine trees? In a, pi in a pine tree. tree. Yeah. I realized that older crowd, they were buying weed, and I had hustle in my blood, right? A paper boy and everything. I said, I'm going to grow this shit. I was selling it to them. All right? They can buy it from me. <laughs> and so, that's how the Soil King started. And I assume platforming means you were creating platforms and trees and growing them up there? Yeah. To, and like, then, hide away? Yeah. That's so you smart. had to bring the soil up there. Yeah, I did. I bring the soil. I bring water up there. I do everything. What? Pulley system. He's That's walking the out there with a ladder yeah. and some soil on his back. That's like some Ewok shit. Yeah. Well, you have to be creative, you know right? Ewok you have to be hiding. I mean, no, 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 I don't. I try. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is Ewok? It's some people that live in the trees yeah. and return of the Jedi, Star yeah. Wars. <sighs> and they had platforms yeah. and they did everything to the trees. Yeah. They're probably growing pot. Yeah. Hawaiians do it too, man. It was black. I mean, all, I mean the, the tropicals is cool because I have friends over there. And in order in the jungle area where you're being, you're trying to be. You know, hide your hide back then. The way to get to the, to the sky and the sun is to be up at the top of the trees. Really? So they were growing platforms up there. I didn't learn that till later on in life. But. So I didn't even know platform growing was a thing. Yeah, yeah neither did I. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's, that's where George sneaky. Lucas got his idea from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I you mean, know? maybe, right? These guys, these guys 
I have a stoner. But you didn't Definitely. have a beard back then. Like, I mean, what was Star Wars written in the I 70s? Had long, I had long hair. I was a little... He, he, saw, was a you, he saw you up in the tree growing pot. He's like, I'm going to turn that into a bunch of Ewoks that are, like, swinging around and un, um, idolize golden metal things. Come on, I'm kind of like an Ewok. Well, now, now. 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 Like, you know, like that, like that, like that, like that. So no, the was, origins of Star Wars are not from an experience that he had. That's, no, but Star Wars was it back then, yeah, for were, sure. I remember going to my first Star so Wars funny. movie. I couldn't wait for the first Star Wars, which really screwed me because it wasn't even really the first Star Wars. I had, when all the earlier ones started coming out, I think I was, they could do something with this. I mean, because you got that Ewok thing yeah. going on now, yeah. and it's an origin story. We could do like Let's Ewok farms or something, you know? We totally do. We could like so, go to some place where there's trees. We could take the soil, <laughs> pink soil. You know, you could be running around. You could come swing out on a rope. You know, I just be need like, to oh, see this. This grandfather Ewok. You know what I'm saying here? You should make like gnomes. I, I can envision this. Hey, hey, I'm down. Let's go. Anybody want to collab that Ewok. out there? Hit me up. No, let's go. No, hey, nobody's oh, gonna man. steal the idea. It's gotta be you. Yeah. You gotta oh, do like yeah. Ewok soil cakes, like yeah. gnomes, yeah. and for people to put in their garden. I got gnomes. Like, like you put it like in your face. You know. Wow, we could make it like a destination retreat. That is Ewa. <laughs> you could be, you'd be, you'd be like wandering around in the shadows and the trees, swinging back and forth. Yeah. You know, the, the we cannabis could, tourists we could grow coming some, around. Some cool space queen out there, right? We could grow yes. some bitch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Who's that? That's the grandfather of Ewa. You just like forgot a cool name there, sub cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so back to reality. So you're 11 years old. And, and uh, when I turned 12 years old, the next year I got arrested for growing weed in the same platform in the same pine tree. And that's when I realized, fuck, I got to get smart about this. You were 12? You were 11, I was 12 when I was growing weed for the first time in that up in the pine tree. And 12, next year I got arrested again for doing and, it. And so you probably were the youngest person ever arrested for growing weed in the history of the United States. It's possible. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe that could be. I don't 12, know. Twelve. Interesting. Young. I mean, that's some. Uh, that's interesting. We have to. We have to yeah. do some research on that. Well, hey, research I want to find all you guys out there like, like me. Let's. Uh, what let's state was that in? California. California. So, so we're, look, that's going to be the tagline on our podcast. The, in, meaning the youngest person ever arrested for weed in the United States for weed growing and prove us wrong. See what I'm saying? There you go. Okay, so. Yeah, exactly. So you get that mugshot. You get that 12 year old mugshot. <laughs> I wasn't growing weed with other people in the tree. Like, I had, you know, so. Yeah, I was like, because I was growing. I was growing tomatoes, strawberries, sunflowers. Like, I grow sunflowers my whole life every year. If I knew the name of the Ewok Village, I'd use it right now. So they took you out of the Ewok Village, and they're do you're doing hard time in county. Folsom Cat Folsom no, Prison. This is Juvenile <laughs> Hall. This is Juvenile Hall. The county in prison came after, but Juvenile Hall. And that, so that was my start to my criminal career. So how'd you get well, I mean not how'd you get out, but what happened? So you got out, you came back to cannabis, you keep growing again? Yeah. I never stopped. <laughs> I stopped when I got married and had kids after I paroled from San Quentin in the nineties for a little while because you know there's a lot of reasons but one of them was i i thought cannabis was a gateway to other drugs which i found out that was a fucking lie and uh and i'm green and sober now because i've been in recovery since the uh, first time i ever walked in a, in an AA meeting was the age of 13 years old 13 years old it was a fast drinking or drinking and partying i was homeless um, yeah living by myself at that time and uh growing weed in the hills and selling doobies to high school and working full time but you're young bro um, i mean it's just life you know i mean uh, i you know i bought my first house when i was 18 years old i had my i mean 19 i had a plumbing company uh, when i was 18 i started 18 i started well, i went straight to work when i pulled from prison i went to college you know so i did a little backwards but i'm telling you man i didn't waste any time i hustled I hustle in reality no one was in my life at a young age there was nobody to take care of me, but I was able to uh, turn that around and take care of myself. So you're doing some work up in Northern California, growing mm -hmm. in that community and stuff, and that was from 18 until... No, I Northern California started in 2000, 2002 when I moved up there. I uh, And that's when I, when I called it my home from 2002. Before that, I used to just run up there and buy weed many, many years before that. And... Uh, but I didn't really Those were the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed. Uh, yeah. I could sell weed up there, but when I ran out of weed, 
you know Northern California, that's where you had to get your weed. Yeah. So, so, so 2002, you moved to Northern California, though, to try to get to when you opened so, the soil case. Okay. Yeah, so I, in, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, I think I think I think I think when I paroled from San Quentin, um, I started working, built a subdivision down in Santa Cruz County, um, in Watsonville. And then, and then my, I moved up to, my father bought some property in Cloverdale, California. And he says, I got this property. You want to, you want to build another subdivision up here? And I'm like, man, you know, and I tr- took a drive up to Cloverdale. I always drove through it and I never really hung out in it. As soon as I went in this town, I'm like, oh, this is where I'm raising my kids right here. Yes, I'm going to build a subdivision right here. And I went back to the area. I got my wife and kid, kids at the time. And I said, man, 30 days, we're going to be living in Cloverdale. And it was less than two weeks later before we were already up there. And that's, it was just, it was a small little town. And, yeah. uh, yeah. So, 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 so you settled down in Cloverdale. Yeah. You built the subdivision. Yeah. Planted some plants on your own still, or in the, in the I was, at, at, during that time, <laughs> the trees. And during that time, that's you know, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, there was, there was a, you know, ten years of my life that uh, I wanted to raise kids, and I was afraid that smoking weed would bring me back into doing hard drugs and drinking alcohol. I thought it was right. a gateway, mm-hmm. and uh, so I was afraid. So I, when I started growing weed again, I, I wasn't even consuming it for the first year or two back then. And then all of a sudden, I, re- I realized that my insanity, you know, and my recovery depend on on cannabis. Like, I am 100% green and sober. My life is great. My, I like you, an entrepreneurial brain. You know, I'm business savvy. I got street smarts. I got business smarts. And my brain doesn't shut off. It just refuses to turn off. And and what I've learned throughout my life in every aspect is, Either either your brain and you or something controls you or you learn that disability and flip it around, you learn how to control it. And what cannabis applied yeah. what can- cannabis allowed me to do was to shut the fuck up, put my phone down and relax and enjoy my family. Live with in the business live in the and I can sleep. And I can get a good night's sleep and I can wake up and do it all over again. Without cannabis, I'm I have a notepad by my bed and I'm waking up every you know, hour, two hours, writing down thoughts because there's super important thoughts and business that I need to happen. So right. I would ne- it didn't work. And cannabis worked, and it put that away. It was my it medicinally. It's like NyQuil. I mean, except NyQuil's not good for you. Cannabis exactly. is. Exactly. That's right? true. That's not yeah. natural. Yeah. So that's or red wine weird. for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Soil King. So when did you start the Soil King? What year? 2000. I mean, so I was making soils and growing since, and everything. Since you were 11. Well, yeah. Technically. And huh. uh, and Soil King started, I was I built that subdivision in Cloverdale, and I started right. this. I built the subdivision in Cloverdale, and I started the second phase um, of the subdivision. I think it was 13 more lots, and the 08 downturn happened. But I was already growing soil and coined the Soil Kings. And, uh, and at that time, and it was a passion for me. Growing cannabis, growing everything was just my, that's it's my sanity. It's what I do. It's my conscious ability to touch Mother Nature and find mm-hmm. my higher power, man. Yeah. And, uh, and I was great at it. Giving. Soil, but I'm, you know, I'm building a subdivision and I'm doing all this. And then the downturn happened and I was like, this is great, man. This is God's plan. Yeah, because I, you know, I, you know, sitting at a board room, at a bunch of people that didn't dress like this, dressed like this, didn't feel really comfortable when I came in, when I came into, uh, um, you know, you know, when the downturn happened, and I just said, this is great, because now I'm going to, I'm going to build soil, and I'm going to grow weed, and I'm going to change the world one plant at a time with responsible farming and conscious cultivation. That was like 2008, and that was the beginning. 2008 is when the downturn happened. 2008 and 9 is really when I started picking up on soils, right? 2012, I started the Soil King Garden Center. And the reason I started the Soil King Garden Center was because I was living in the mountains and I was growing you know, 700 plants and seeds. And I had you know, helicopters and ARs with ropes coming at me and, sure. and you know, the, the fucking drug war days the type of shit. And I loved it. God, I loved it. And I'm <laughs> fucking good at it. Like, I'm, I'm fucking good at it. You know, I'm 
know? <laughs> so I love it. It's like, and so I had. Good old days. Yeah. My, uh, every, you know, my people close to me, they're always worried. You know, they're always worried. And it's true, you know, I mm-hmm. see gunfights and stupid stuff, you know, that yeah. can happen. I learned how to be a, I learned that I'm an irresponsible gun owner when I, when I pulled a trigger and realized I didn't think it through. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I, when I, when, when I realized that I didn't, I didn't think it through what would happen on the other end, right? I was attacked, I was ambushed, and I fired back. And, you know, I don't want to go into the criminal side of this whole thing, but it, it ended up okay. But what it really did is it taught me a valuable lesson. And if you have, you know, if you have guns, and you have guns on a cannabis site or anywhere, and if you don't ever think, think if you're not processing what's going to happen when it happens and what you're going to do after you're an irresponsible gun owner, man. When you, when you pull the trigger, you have to know what you're going to do, and you, people never think about that. Just carrying a gun and being cool with a gun, it's lame. Right? Mm. If you're going to carry a gun, be responsible. It took me years to become... I'm, I'm a gun owner now, and I carry a gun, and I'm responsible. I play the, I play the tape out. You know, I, 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 you don't have to answer this question, but my question was my question to was, <laughs> so did you ever pull that trigger? <laughs> so don't... So yeah, that, maybe I pulled no. it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get very in trouble. I'm not. It's very simple. You can't find it. You can't find it. You can't find the body. You can't find the body. For a body and you, you see a trail. You start thinking, what are you going to do? You start processing shit, you know, and it, it's never good. You know, the whole process. So, yeah, it, it ended up okay. You know, my thoughts in my head is if I find somebody, what do I do? Do I get the backhoe and I bury him? Now, now I have my familia, my, all my homies that love me. We've been working together for years. These are my family, right? They take care of me. And uh, we're hustling together. Now I put the responsibility on them. You know, now I got to worry about them. You know, is there, if something happens, are they going to tell? They want it. My best friend, Paco, just had a baby, right? He's my best friend. Same birthday. You don't think about these think things. About now these he's going to put him in a position. I put his baby in a position i put his family in a position yeah. by not thinking this stuff through and uh you know thank god i didn't have to bury anybody and it didn't end up like that but it makes you think so that's a good message out there i try to share is if you're going to carry a weapon you better you better you better think twice know the consequences, I, uh, you know what i absolutely agree with you um so soil king this soil king garden center tell us about tell us the evolution of that where's that now and so it's in 2012, 10 years later. Yeah, Soil King's, Soil King's Garden Center. It was like the epic like center the epic for, center for uh, Soil King Productions TV. We did all events there. We, we did uh, Taco Tuesdays. I had people fly from Maine to get married at a Taco Tuesday. And we had people from all over the world that would show up back then. And, and then public figures, you know, uh, you know, the OGs of the industry would all hang out. Frenchie Cannoli. Uh, everybody, you know, everybody would come, and it was just like it was like the the hot spot, and it was a soil yard on uh, a twenty five hundred square foot store building with a huge with a on a two acre soil or a flat lot with all soil bays, and I you know I back then I started manufacturing my own soil with a trommel and a bucket mixer, and it was called Marley Mix. I had Marley Mix, Marley Moonshine. Uh, Marley Shroom Bloom, which was a mushroom compost, and then uh, Marley Moonshine was Marley Mix, and I inoculated a, a living tea on it, and it was really good. Except for I started, and then I started really realizing that you can't get quality on a trommel and bucket mixing. You know, not quality that we need. We had consistency, and quality, and, and then the sourcing of materials back then was, you know, green waste. Uh, from municipality, green waste, waste mm-hmm. managements and stuff like that. And that's just, taint, that stuff's so tainted, like heavy metals and any, you know, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a big nerd on sourcing clean inputs and building, you know, soils with minimal amount of you know, contaminants whatsoever with it. Like our, our levels of heavy metals are nothing, right? And, uh. Yeah, so I'm G- uh, um, you know, I'm non-GMO, non-GMO. I'm all that stuff. Every every input is definitely something. So where does most of your? I mean, I guess so. You source the soil, and mm-hmm. it's your your manufacturing center. You pack. I build it all, and I build it in a soil manufacturing facility in Bakersfield, California. Okay. Yeah. And then so it's uh, packaged out there yep. and shipped around. 
that's good that it's in California because everybody around the world will want to know California soil to grow. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Like California yeah, grown. Good. I mean, I, I, was, I was slinging, you know, 40,000 yards in the yellow triangle, like truckloads all day, every day, going everywhere. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a cra- crazy amount. Yeah. So can, 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 uh, so the, the Soil King Garden Center is kind of a, I mean, you're, you're now online. The Garden Center, is it still around? No, it closed no, down. It closed it down. Yeah. Out here in Tempe. I got rid of the retail and I opened a distribution at the Center. So it's e-commerce. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, yeah. So it's mis- you know, a little misdirecting, but it's all good. The, yeah. The original. Yeah, I mean, it just, it was, you know, when you have $35,000 a month in overhead, nobody coming through the doors. It's a, definitely a liability in business. You yeah, look at all businesses that way. That was because of the downturn in the California. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that must have been a tough time for a lot of people out there. I mean, it still yeah. is. Yeah, you know? I mean, we lost a lot. Like, I'm, I, I, since 2021, I sold more soil. No, I shouldn't say 21. 22, I sold more soil out of California than in California. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that, that's unfortunate. I mean, you know, market structures change and, and reality changes. Uh, with that, sometimes the culture and community is lost. And, you know, it, it is the, the inevitable pattern of life, but it is, you know, you reflect upon it kind of like with a romantic nostalgia. It's hard, man, yeah. because you get emotionally attached, right? That's my baby. That built the entire soil. Like, that was marketing and everything. They put it all in there, and I had and I had to turn the key off. Like, that's, it, you know, but, but I... I understand enough about businesses, and I still own, you know, I own businesses, and that's one business I had, one business I had to let go, but it was very difficult, because uh, it feels like I left a piece of me, but, you know, I, I came out here to Arizona. And yeah, but yet now you're taking the concept, the spirit, the idea, what was the Soil King Garden Center soil from Northern California, and you're making it available to the world. It's like your baby. Your baby grew up, and, and now so, it's time for it to so now, now it's going fly everywhere. in different ways. You're taking, you're taking that soil out of Northern California, California, and you're spreading it around the world. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's a great result. Yeah. Great result. Yeah. yeah, it's more about that. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I mean, I can go into long details about testing. I'm not going to the agricultural limits of testing versus cannabis limits. Like nobody, nobody's making those leaps. You, with living soil, especially, man, you have to know your shit. You yeah. have, you have to know what you're. Because you have investments coming in, a lot of people with a lot of money that are changing from synthetic cultivation to living soil beds, and they have to be successful. successful. Most people aren't just thinking about thinking about heavy metals or pesticides or testing, you know, herbicides. You have to you have to know your shit. So you're shipping soil around the country, around the world, all over too? to the UK, uh, Hawaii, um, USBI, SBI. Right now, the EU right soon. No, I mean, no, I'm, no, I'm thinking if I'm in Spain and I can sell my product like grown with California oh, yeah. soil yep. from the Soil King yep. and grown here in Barcelona, but we're using soil yeah, from California. California. That's all good. That's all, all good. good. You know, I'm not sure the sun changes. Sure the sun changes. Sun changes. No, the sun changes. Yeah. Yeah. They have great. The they have some of the great growing climates ever, and they match a lot with California. That's why there's a lot of great. There's a lot of great. Uh, you know, vineyards over Never there. Look at their mind how important that is. Appalachians are super important, and that's a great appellation right there. Yeah, I got. I mean, you know, I, I know a little bit about a lot of aspects of this industry. Mm-hmm. She knows much more about cultivation than anybody in this office. You know, I tried to run a cultivation once, and uh, it was too lonely. It was too many. It was too many. Time, too much time alone. And uh, at that point, well, I, you're you're not alone when you grow with conscious right. no, I with plants. Microbes They're breathing. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're like it's it's heaven, man. It's like. But it's, then again, I'm that guy, right? I'll take my shoes off and walk across the field. No, now it sounds a lot better. Two thousand, yeah. two thousand fifteen. I was a lot more interested in people. So now I'm not. Now more about the soil and the plants. Maybe some strawberries. So, so what's next for you guys? Where are you so guys? Uh, at? I, I also, I also, I was, if not the first, I was one of the very first licenses given in Prop 64 in California under right. a micro license, um, which is great. I was, I pr- probably produced the longest rosin, rosin uh, ice water solventless facility on uh, manufacturing. I own distribution, seed to soul. 
uh, distribution and manufacturing company with a nursery I had. I like cultivation. that name. Cultivation, yeah. Seed to Soul? Seed to Soul, yeah. That's that's, and I have Seed to Soul Farms. That's what I'm known for. But then down in Southern California, my partner's down there is uh, Rosin Tech, Rosin Tech Labs out there. So we've been producing and rocking uh, solventless for many, many years right now. And really only really a craft, a craft, creating, creating a lot of what a lot of what they by pioneering, like pioneering it. Like we was up against a wall with uh, hydrocarbon way back in, you know, 2014, 15. Um, they said solvent and rosin had no legs. And now we look back, I said, you know, one of these days you're going to come to this side of the table. And now all these hydrocarbon guys are doing the mods, they're doing solvent and rosin because it's a whole expression of the man. You're not breaking shit not down, breaking man. You, it's skill because you have to have the right genetic. You have to have the right conditions. For me, it's greenhouse. For me, it's greenhouse uh, and outdoor, preferably. We're washing. Uh, I, I do a lot of living beds now in indoor, and we're crushing the terpene level. I mean, it's uh, – and we're seeing big expression of the plants, but it's so – it's such a craft – to know what your cultivar is, right? And to harvest it perfectly, take care of it perfectly, freeze it gently, freeze it gently. and you know, all those you know, packs, all those like, packs, like hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon, you know, you can use a great product that you can use at worst ever. And then, you know, you're extracting THC, you're extracting some terpenes, you're buying terpenes and putting it back in, and you're trying to, and you're trying to build what Mother Nature did for you on a physical level, just, man, level. Just, I mean, there's a place for both of them. I'm not knocking it. I'm just, you know, I'm a solventless savage guy. So you guys primarily focus on the soil kings. You guys are, you guys are, you guys, you guys serve, you guys serve things on the soil. I have a for, for, I have soil for, I have a soil kings for products. I have a whole business coming out as well, but, um, talk about that later. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I do everything. I'm a, I, you know, I launched a lot of products into the industry. Amazing Dr. Zyme, if anybody's ever heard of that. I launched it. The Trim Bag, I've launched it. Mr. B's Green Trees, I've launched that. These are brands that come into me and I say, let's go. If I can use it and I like it and it works for me and it's got a conscious manufacturing family that's behind it that understands the mission, I bring it into Soil King approved products and, I, man, we rock it. Well, we're thrilled, you know, and Mita, we're thrilled to promote guys like you on through our network uh, mostly for the reason that you are an OG you yeah. know you come from the roots of the community from that spirit that was you know taking care of the plant and helping people get their medicine while drug war was happening yeah and now that there's this big transition into this tax and regulate over regulate market it's 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 leaving a lot of people out it, it's 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 complicated it's it's nuanced it's disgusting but it, it is what it is. Um, so, so to see somebody like yourself navigate successfully, stay alive, take your craft, take your knowledge, and keep moving forward. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of credibility behind what you Thank do. You. Thank you. And so we we appreciate your your success. I appreciate you too. Where will people? What's the best way for people to find you? At the Soil King. At the Soil King. Um, yeah. Uh, on anything. Uh, on all the channels, all the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I got many, many years of content on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. Do, uh, do you also do some consulting as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do lots of consulting. Collabs, reach out to me. I'm here in Arizona. Let's have some fun. If you're, you're out there, you know, want me to come see you? You want me to come see you? Hang out? Uh, give some suggestions, you know, if you, you know, I'm down. Like, I consult all over the country. Yeah. I have successful farms, uh, you know. A portfolio that will come out of the box and say, "Yeah, this is how we do it. This is the results we got utilizing Soil King." You're not in Europe yet, though. Like you're, you said, you're just I just, starting. You, you have business in this industry is. I mean, pioneering this fucking industry is difficult. And, and what I say about that is, is, uh, is uh, you know, like you're talking, you know, like you're talking, about, you were just talking, you were just talking about, 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 about regulations, and you have all these big corporate companies, and you have like. And mm -hmm. Legacy never wants me to really say this, but this is pioneering. It's pioneering 101. Is bridge building is the success of this industry, period. It's, it's if you want to hate on this, if you want to hate on this, it's never going to get anywhere. Solutions comes with sitting at the same table and, and understanding that we each play a part. We need each other. Mm -hmm. Like, that's pioneering. And, and when, I, when I talk like this, people hate it, and I get a lot of shit. But I'm, I have a purpose in my life. I have a map, you know, that's being led, and I'm following it. And 
Pioneering 101 comes to when you're going through it, everybody laughs and is, you know, against you. Five years down the road, they're asking for a hug and an autograph because of the work you did back then. So when you're when you're in the trenches and you're pioneering, you have to keep you know your blinders up and you have to move forward as fast as you can, and you have to do what you believe instead of what others are telling you to do. Yep. Facts. Yeah, that's well, the truth. You know, I mean, and the only reason I bring up Europe so many times is because we're going there next week. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we're to Spanibus. Let's go. We're going to Berlin. Have you been to Spanibus yet? I, I get invited every year. I'm Dude, just so busy. That man. would be your every perfect year. spot. That's I have everybody the over there. Like, but the check OGs. it out. This summer, Germany is launching its giant program of clubs and at-home cultivations, mini cultivation, not-for-profit, weird kind of club model, which is all good. Yeah. It's better than the corporate model. It's not quite perfect because it is kind of limited, but it's still there's going to be a lot of growing in Germany. And if I'm like out there, I'm like the differentiator is that I'm growing with soil. I'm growing with California. I mean, yeah, I right can now, sell, I can sell it over there. I can, I am, I can, I'm, 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 I'm container I'm low, container low soil. I'm so soil. I'm a little grow in, 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 in Berlin. Right now? No, th- no, that's what I should. Uh, so that's we're, a we're, business we're, model. Okay, so you and I are envisioning something. This is right. called manifestation. Yeah, no, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So what I think we should do, like Mary Jane Berlin, is a giant conference in uh, in this June. And everybody's going to be talking about how do we open up a club? Where have they opened up clubs? What do they do in Barcelona? What do they do in Las Vegas? What do they do in Northern California? Yep. Club, 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 clubs. Grows, 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 grows. How limited are they going to be? They're going to be little grows, not for profit grows, 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 grows. And then somebody's going to say, but well, we want to be the differentiator. We want to yeah. be the difference. There's 100 million people in Germany. Yeah. You know, and they're going to say, well, let's bring in a couple of freaking containers loads a fucking month from the Soil King. But California is the only club in Berlin growing with California soil. That's the differentiator. I'm, I'm you registered know? in the let's EU right it. now. You know? I mean, I'm registered in the UK right now. I'll but, be but, registered yeah. by the end of it. By then, I'll be re- yeah, I mean, exactly. that's where it is. It's finding yeah. a distributor over there. Like, over in Spain, I got a distributor. It's cost me, mm-hmm. for, for the pay to play, it cost me 10 k in order for me to get licensed to distribute yeah. over there. Is that's it, what it is it expensive to send over a container? Of it's expensive oil? everywhere, but, you know, we're, we're building soils. And Big Root Soil, is, there's parts of it shipped from four different countries just to build a bag of soil. Right, and sourcing is so difficult. Everything has to be so clean. So one thing I'm about, it has to, yeah, it has yeah. to hit those rev limits, man. And it's like I'm not trying to buy. I, 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 this is who I am. I ride my integrity on what I do. Right, I stand yeah. up for the truth, what I believe. Not awesome. always perfect. So much, yeah. so much opportunity out there. So. Yeah, Germany's down. Let's go. We, we, let's, let's, let's make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I love having these discussions. Yeah, me too. Because I have these discussions all the time with people every day. And different people end up doing different things, but it's good to have them on the podcast and we invite other people to come in and have discussions with us too. So, yeah, so we would appreciate introducing you to our audience. Any closing thoughts? I mean, I, I'm also building out New York. We got licenses out, in, micro licenses out in New York, dispensary build outs, uh, working on a uh, Soil King huge garden center in Buffalo right now. Um, it's called Soil King Co op Center with a huge design center. Kind of like going into a model home and selecting all your lights and fixtures and all that stuff, but you're gonna come, you're gonna come speak with the with the industry leaders, not some sales guy to a sales guy to a to a to a, a manufactured product. I'm dealing with manufacturing, manufacturing the best people person. We're gonna set this up, set this up, your test, your test, like to be able to build out anything you want from greenhouses to soil to. Uh, to engineering, to plot design. To, I mean, there's so everything, lights, I mean, everything, all the way to how to, how to do it, you know, count, how to do the cogs from seed to sale. Like, I mean, all of it. Seriously, yeah, you think awesome. we should do this Ewok village thing, though. I like it. I'm down. I'm just trying to figure out where the trees are appropriate. And you've got the platforms in the soil. So we're, I mean, we've got the- Iba Farms out in Queen Creek. He's, he's like the tropical jungle out there. So you walk out there, it's the way to see a regenerative food uh, supplier. Guys, he's my, Mark, he's my big brother. You know, that's what I call him. He calls me little brother. And, uh, and uh, that's where that's the Ewok building out there. It's all tropical it's all right tropical now. Right now. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. A cool video on that. Yeah, it's <laughs> the best place. It really is. And he does, like, feeds the, 
he, everybody's got his own farm out there. Everybody comes on Saturday, picks up their farm boxes, and he's at all the, you know, the farmers markets around. Yeah. Okay, That's I'm awesome. finally going to Google it. Awesome. What is the name? The Bright Tree Village. <laughs> That's, That's even a good name. The Bright Tree Village. Yeah. The majestic trees high above the lush, lush surface of Endor is the Bright Tree Village where the Ewoks live. That's kind of noise. They don't speak, though. I talk a lot of shit, right? Yeah. So that's the other side. Maybe I, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you're, 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 you're like an older generation of Ewok that never yeah. came out in the movie. Yeah, I'm the Ewok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's well, been a pleasure getting to know you, and too, we look man. forward to seeing yeah, you on the you. circuit. We yeah. look forward to your advancement and your ongoing activity in the cannabis space in all directions I appreciate and, uh, you mm -hmm. people should look into you and uh, follow you on your channels and yeah, uh, yeah thanks for dropping by Peter. yeah appreciate thanks your for time me. Yeah, been thank great. you awesome and that, go ahead that was another episode of Mita Unshackled